Hello, and you're very welcome along to the 40th edition of the Take a Poll podcast with Andy Cummins and Declan Carroll. And we are going to be reviewing the Easter festival from Fairy House and looking forward to Nice this upcoming Thursday. But as usual, Deck, how are things? How are you? All go with yourself? Yeah, all go. Uh, three, three days racing and a night at the dogs. But, um, and the dogs. <laughs> and the dogs, yeah. I suppose uh, it, it's always difficult, Fairy House at Easter. You know, it, it can be. Not this year. Oh, <laughs> well, I was just gonna say it, it, it started off difficult, but it ended really well for us. So yeah, um, yeah, it was a good day yesterday. Uh, yeah, great no, well. it was think about the weather, but uh, the number still turned out, and great atmosphere as always at the Grand National. Yeah, um, and even I felt like even the twenty runners this year, I was initially a little bit disappointed by it, but as soon as the tapes went up, it was grand. I I, I thought it was a a good race of of decent quality. Um, I know last year, obviously, we, we had Royal Pagoy top weight, bringing to see him over here and, and trying it off a big weight. Uh, and Manella Kakuna headed the weights off 148 this year, but it was still a, a good race. Um, and like even better that we had the winner, I suppose. But, um, yeah, called yeah, a long, long time ago. Called weeks ago on Bobby Joe Day, oh, I'm pretty sure, even before that. Um, yeah, fantastic. A really, really uh, great week for the podcast. And, and we do very much appreciate everybody getting in touch with us online and, and private messages and coming up to us at the races on Easter Sunday. Um, and I know people came up to you as well on Monday as well, Dick. Yeah, um, it, it's a bit mental, to be honest. Like, you know, <laughs> getting um, uh, DMs, we're getting emails. And, emails, uh, yeah. <laughs> emails, people coming up to us. Thanks very much. And uh, mm. look, we, we love it. We try always to have time for anyone who wants to come up and say hello and have a, a quick chat. And, um, yeah. you know, we, we really enjoy it. Anyone who wants to talk horses, we're always more than happy to talk. Basin. absolutely couldn't agree more and um, we'll kick off the show deck with a very quick fairy house review um nothing overly too dramatic on the on the saturday i don't think but easter sunday was, well, a big day. Well, it was something very dramatic on the saturday but we we did cover that in the last <laughs> we covered that in the last one yeah, absolutely <laughs> i mean podcast was um obviously sunday saw splans terror win the willow warm power to call cup uh, beating <laughs> tactical move and blood destiny uh great to see jimmy mangan back in the big time with such a good horse and obviously a horse that we've banged on about since i think the inception of this podcast really yeah, uh, yeah. top one or two spalans tower was at the forefront of our mind well, you said it since the the podcast to be fair yeah we had to brainwash it it took a few weeks but, yeah. there now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no it was brilliant to see um really athletic jumper i, I think uh, he does take the odd chance uh, missed I think the eighth or ninth fence down the back but a few people online were replying to me crabbing his jumping a little bit I think it's just a style though like he wasn't losing any momentum he was quick from A to B um, the faster they went the more accurate he got and I was saying this to you on, on Sunday deck I, I think those runs at two miles over those inadequate trips um, and that experience that he got and that's what we were talking about a few weeks ago that's probably ultimately won him the race I think um, having the experience to take those long ones, short ones, um, he's just more experienced than the rest of them, and I thought it was a fantastic performance. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, it was probably, um, it, it's been a brilliant campaign, you'd have to say. That was, um, like, I think we were scratching our head a little bit. We're going, running over two miles the last day, having to give weight mm. away, but as you said, it's probably one of the race. I thought jumping was fine. He missed one that I can remember. Yeah. I think the, the downhill fence after Ballyhack, mm. And uh, other than that, I thought he was fine, and I never really thought it was in doubt. I was pretty confident the the whole way yeah. out. Yeah, pulled to the inside, um, or or pulled to the to the far rail, uh, similar to what he did when he beat Blood Destiny in, in the Grade Three in January. Um, oh, I just think he's a very good horse, and when he when he sees three miles, I I think you're going to see a top top class horse. I I'm very very confident he could be confident in a or he, he could be you know a competitive in a saddle chase or an Irish Gold Cup or something like that and who knows maybe even a Cheltenham Gold Cup but he is at bare minimum a three mile grade one horse I think uh, I'm very very excited to see him next year Um going on to the main event deck the Irish Grand National one that you led led the charge with in intense raffles um, and, and you said very quickly after this like this was nearly over after a fence or two from where he was and how he was jumping but it, it's great to see a front running grey isn't it Oh, come here. If, if I think the public are going to fall in love with this horse, and um, 
you know, the smaller yard and we're used to seeing winning these big races. He, and as you said, a bold jump in front running grey, what's not to like about him? Uh, mm. I was pretty confident the whole way around. Like, you know, when you go to the first and, you know, you, you find, you can find out a lot at the first and it's how well they take the, take the first fence. These big races, big handicap chases, how would it, you know, how would it affect the confidence? But he went to the first and he was very, very good and it was just, I thought he was just awesome the whole way. He, he mm. jumped really, really well. I think the most impressive thing was he made a mistake at the fourth last, but he picked up, like, it was the worst possible time to make a mistake because they were beginning to get racing and it could have really knocked the wind out of him. But when he made the mistake, he just picked up like it never happened and mm. and, and began to go away from them. Um, uh, you know, I did get a little bit worried when I seen any second out coming after him, but... yeah. yeah. I think he might have been playing a little bit in front. Like I, I just thought he was really, really good. I think he's a Gold Cup horse. I think the two, um, nap of the taps or the naps of the tap, whatever way you want to word it. I think about Gold Cup horses. Um, obviously, what what, what rating has Balance Tower got? Look, he's a goal. He's a great one winner. Yeah, I I had him about one fifty. To 153 after that so he does have a little bit to find he was 145 and in my yeah. personal idea i raised him you know seven eight pounds um but that's still you're just scratch i'm still think they're just scratching the surface i think there's another 10 11 12 pounds improvement bare minimum when we when he sees three miles yeah um, and that would put him close enough to grade one company anyway i must i think uh, intense raffles probably gonna get 10 pounds for that is he yeah, yeah which would put them about 150. 150, yeah. Mm. But look, they're both only six. They're both only and six, yeah. They can take totally different, totally different routes to the Gold Cup next year. You know, they, mm. they, they still need to prove they're good enough. And and even this spring, are we going to get to see them? Like in 10 raffles, you could run in, in the Punchstown Gold Cup, but he can also mm. run in the two of them could face each other in, in the three mile grade one novice on the Tuesday. Yeah, a fact to file the rock up there as well. Early. <laughs> yeah, we could have a fact fact to file Monty Star rocking up there as well. Um, cracker, I race. know the way you're thinking could even rock up there. Yeah. I don't know if McManus will run three now, but like you wouldn't put it past him. He'd have no problem doing it. Um, look, fact, I suppose. Look, Galloping at Champs is going to go for the, the Gala Cup, isn't he? So mm. they probably won't run fact to file. Intense Raffles could well run in the Gala Cup. What else do you do with him? Like, he could go to. Um, he, I was thinking he could go to Newbury for the Hennessy mm. uh, next next winter, or uh, as a mate of mine, Cottle said to me, he could he could end up at Haydock. You know, that's what um, exactly what I was thinking. Betfair Chase at Haydock, yeah. yeah uh, the owners yeah. love the race, obviously, with uh, the memories yeah. they had with Bristol Des Moines. And, and exactly. I, Thomas Gibney said in his interview that they actually originally wanted to start him this season at Haydock, but the yeah. ground was frozen over, and it, and the race and the actual traveling took a lot out of him. Which is maybe something to keep in the back of your head. Yeah. Um. Definitely. definitely something to keep in the back of your head. But I, I had a feeling Betfair Chase ahead of might be his early season target next year. Yeah. Possibly. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I, I was thinking the Hennessy, but look, um, they're, they're they're good problems, nice problems to have. Oh. But um, no better. Two, two brilliant performances. Look, I, I was delighted to see JJ Seven win the Irish Grand National as well, particularly after the, the unseat in the Gold Cup when he was gone. Mm. Look, he was very far out, but he was gone fine. Like, you know, it was way too far out to, to say whether he had a chance or not, but he's certainly travelling. Yeah. It'd be far. Look, I I would think I think he's a good chance of retaining that grade one of punches down on fast or slow as well. Um, we know Gallop and Deschamps, he's probably left it all there, Cheltenham, and I'd say Martin Brassel would have fast or slow ready to roll. Uh, just before we get on to one more talking point deck, like it could have been the best Easter Monday in the history of any podcast if Aussie's Lodge had held on and if maybe Maxim didn't clip his own heels at, at that second last hurdle. Like we were, yeah, it was it was a big, big weekend. But that Aussie's Lodge, that's that was grueling. Um, like you you were very, very confident with that shout as well. And and I'd say it was a one on one job because even 50 yards from the line, he looked home and hosed. I suppose the best. The only good thing you can take from it was the first race of the day and not the last. Because yeah. that was the last race of the day. And you're yeah. waiting on him for a significant amount of money. Mm. You know, that would have been tough to take. But when it's it's out of the way, first, 
Like yeah. if home and, and checked with the winnings would have been. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not great. Probably what I shouldn't have done, but it'd be, it would have been an awful lot worse if that was the last race of the day. So, look, yeah. like, uh, who has a, um, McDermott, I thought, was was quite good. Great ride. Mm. He, 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 he takes some chances now, but um, again, you know, unless he was going to come down, it was never really in doubt. Like, you know, I thought he could only beat himself watching the race. Mm. Um, but I think the one of the most impressive performances of the week came in the juvenile hurdle in Butler Secret. Um, I'd mentioned that he, I was just taken by him, um, when he won at Nace, he went down to the first hurdle and looked like he never seen one again. But by the time he came to the last, he looked like a, a professional. And again, I thought it was just thought it was very, very good. And a lot of people liked the, the tweet last night. When you know, some people are probably saying what's he on about but you know the, the trainer has won the champion hurdle with a five-year-old before and it was a, it was a juvenile hurdle and i didn't go to the triumph i think this fella could be anything i'm not saying he win the champion hurdle as a five-year-old but in time you know at six he could well be a champion mm. hurdle horse uh we he has he was only seen for the first time february maybe i think it was february yeah he, it was a juvenile hurdle at nice wasn't a great tree uh yeah. in the february end of february mm. and the end of february yeah and he, he look he's gone around there carrying the penalty and he's won really really well but it's his jumping that really I, i've i've really been taken by so i've high hopes for him i i think he could be the real deal mm. and i i do t- i genuinely think he could develop into a champion hurdle horse it doesn't yeah, have get- to be a five but the trainer has one over the five-year-old he has no better man <laughs> And um, you know, it doesn't be people, people forget this that you know, they, they don't have to do all these things young, like you know, he could have an easy enough year unless he proves himself so much that there's no other option but to go, yeah, which is which isn't go. hard to do. Like, all you do, you go in at Down Royal, uh, you go yeah. in at, or, or the fishery lane at Nice, yeah, um, well, Limericker. Christmas. You go, yeah, you go to Limerick at Christmas for the four-year-old graded race, which usually yeah. throws up a very small field. You don't even have to. Nice, yeah, there's another one at Nice. Yeah, the yeah. one that Zarek the Brave won. Yeah, and that's I the think, one that I Espoir think, de Lam won. Like, you don't have to go Madison champion, Irish champion, or no. anything like that. So, uh, I I couldn't I couldn't see him going to the Margiana or, or anything like that. I'd take him no, time. Or right. like, look, mm-hmm. if you get to that stage of the season, you give him an entry, and if you're still unbeaten next march you know and he's shown he's taking his racing well why not roll the dice have yeah. a go because the way he jumps there's not an awful lot to be afraid of in the field very little you know um now look he's gonna have to be a very very good horse to the beat state man and constitution and hopefully he's back hopefully we see him again but you know he's he looks to have the world at his feet anyway he does uh he absolutely does and he won his he's won two of his three races on the flat uh beating yeah. simpson's paradox who i think is a brother to alpha Centauri. um and then Emma Emma table uh 14 to one shot when he won at nice he's rated 87 on the flat so even if they, if they wanted to they could very easily go back on the flat um yeah. he could be a royal ascot type of horse or um you know if they get a win into him they could go on something like the ebor um, I wouldn't start messing cool. around with them now with, with those full fairies on the flat. Yeah. <laughs> there's plenty of money to be won with them. Ah. Um, <laughs> there's plenty of money to be won with them. Um, yeah, but look, he's a very nice horse. And the, the thing I liked about him is I backed the runner-up, Carl the Turan, hmm. uh, or Carl the Terrell, sorry, of Philip Fenton. So I thought ran a lovely race. And I, I watched this race back a few times. And even turning into the home straight, I think Brian Hayes was confident he was going to pick up the winner. And the winner just went away from him as if he wasn't there. And I think you can even, if you look at it through the eyes of the runner-up, who got a confident ride and there was nothing wrong with what Brian Hayes did. Like, he, he was the second best horse in the race. And I don't think in a month of Sundays he was going to beat the winner. But Brian Hayes was confident. But, you know, bought their secret, went away. And I think this is a, a smart piece of form. And I would say the horse that beat Carl the Terrell at Limerick um, in Toledo, who he just looked a lot more mature at Limerick. And... I'm gonna keep a very close eye on Aintree because I imagine Joseph's gonna run him there in the Aintree Grade One. I'd say take a fair bit of beating in that, um, because I think the form is he's given a, a good length to um, to that form. And I'm not 
I'm not in love with the grade one juvenile hurdle form this year, personally. Um, I like Malzber, but I think this could be a nice strain of form to take it on with. So I'm going to do that at Aintree and Punches Town, respectively. And I'm going to keep Fenton's horse in the tracker for next year and I'm, with a bit of luck to go chasing with him nice and early and, and get that weight allowance and maybe up to two and a half miles because I think he'll be a very nice novice chaser next year. Um, anything else, Deck, before we move on to the nice card? Uh, that that kind of caught your eye at Ferios. Oh, look, it was great to see Ali Murphy coming mm. back over and, and having a winner. You know, of course, we have given a lot of stick to over the years. But um, I know, yeah, it, it, it was... It was good to see, I think. Yeah, it was a very, it was a very nice touch seeing how happy Gordon was from. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was. Um, you know, that's that's twice now in a couple of weeks. Gardens have to do that. You yeah, know, he, 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 you know, not not so easy, but he he looked genuinely happy for him on. Yeah, you know, on 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 yesterday on Monday. Yeah, well, Ollie owes Gordon probably an awful lot, and and Gordon owes the likes of Martin Pipe an awful lot. So what what goes yeah. around comes around, I suppose. In the end, exactly. uh, so no, that was brilliant to see. I totally agree with that. We'll move on then, deck to Nice. Sure, why not? Uh, the two mile book your summer season barbecue packages at Nice Race Course Maiden Hurdle. Um, usually at this time of the year, we don't seem to get you know the best horses, you know of the crop going in maiden hurdles and understandably so but that still doesn't mean that it's a bad race and there's a horse that i i quite like for next year when he goes chasing here jasco the dam uh, who's by it's gino uh the same sire as obviously the uh sir gino the 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 uh the once triumph hurdle triumph hurdle favorite big tall imposing horse this lad and i'm I think he's going to make a very, very nice chaser. But before he does that, I think he will win this maiden hurdle. I, I'm a, I'm a quite a big fan of him now. I think he's a, he just needs a little bit of time, and I could see him, you know, rising to pretty nice heights over fences when we do see him next year. But Dak, who do you like for this opener, at nice? Yeah, just got it. Um, five year old, nine lengths off Jigoro before splitting this Nagar Fortune and Mercury, and um, mm. was ahead of Gorgeous Tom. On, on the line troop, you could put him ahead. Sorry, put him ahead of Gorgeous Tom on the line troop. Bulldog Gar- Gorgeous Tom was second to Caldwell Potter and, and Fort Slade Steel. Fort quite good, uh, but he was second last time out to the Bulldog. Um, yeah, I'd be quite keen on just got it down here. All right, that could be a very early tap up the top because I, I very much fancy him depending on his price now. Um, I like a few others in here. The Busy Fool, who we've talked a little bit about with Philip yeah. Rothwell. I uh, was a bit disappointed by him, though, last time out, to be yeah, brutally yeah. honest. Um, looking down the field, there's nothing else I'd be losing too much sleep of. Special Cadeau looks like quite an expensive purchase at this stage. I think it was bought for 220000 out of Pam Slides Yard after winning a, a bumper in England, but hasn't really you know, acclimatised to life with Willie Mullins and co. Um, kind of looks exposed at this stage. As you said, Gorgeous Tom, rating a one, two, three, sets a decent standard for a maiden hurdle at this time of year. But as we said, Jasko de Dam does have his measure by the looks on previous runnings. Um, yeah, odds against, I'd be, I'd be very happy to back. And I, I can't see him being odds on, can you? Oh, I could, I could see him being even money. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that. I'd, I'd yeah. probably be okay enough with that. No, I'd be keen on him, yeah, I'd be quite keen on him. Lovely. Uh, on to a mare's maiden hurdle. And and this is kind of more like it now. Uh, this time of year, um, you know, we've got 20 runners, most of which you, you could probably draw a line across quite quickly. Uh, this is probably a match race deck, isn't it? The Great Unknown, who has fair maiden form, um, versus probably Got Glory, who, in fairness, was pulled up on her Irish deb- debut, but... It was behind Astro Diamond in a grade one. Then she was taken out on a uh, better ground in May. Hasn't been seen since. So they've probably been, maybe had a little hold up slash waiting for, well, they haven't been waiting for heavy ground. They've had that all year. But, um, you know, she was 50 to one for a grade one, but was, you know, talk good enough to go into a grade one. Um, Obviously, guard the passion there as well. But is there anything else you, you might like here, Deck Magic Dawn, maybe? Oh, I don't know what race you're looking at. Um... Go on. <laughs> Look, yeah, the, the great unknown. It's been, been fifth twice. The last time was eleven lengths off Tully Hill. Um, I think the form form has been let down a good bit. Um, me lucky Colleen is in here. Obviously, she, she's improving. This is our fifth go at it. 
she's second the last twice um but both winners have been beaten since yeah and then right, 105 just, as well sorry right 105 I, I still think there's even though this won't take as much winning I, i'd say there's something better than 105 in there yeah definitely look there's, there's a couple of juveniles in here I was, kimmy was, was pulled up in the grade one juvenile at, at leperstown she was far lens far to high wind before that um but lucy wang she was far lens second to in the lotto on her irish debut and she's had lark in the morning and pigeon house behind who are about to head of kimmy mm. Lucy Wang is where I'd be going here, and I'd be bullish enough. Fair enough, actually. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, hundred fifty to one. Yeah, I didn't actually. Um, probably should sure. have a, a bit of a. I had, should probably have a bit of a closer look at the Halley horse. Yeah, um, was actually yeah went off a no hoper really, didn't it? Actually, oh yeah, I, I yeah. Sound, Quite like. a surprise the last day, but you know, you, you've you've mentioned it a lot already tonight, and um, yeah, that's a fair point. But far length second to in the lotto on our on our Irish debut, so. Like the, this farm in there with Lark in the morning is one the, the Fred Winter. Look, I know we probably weren't seeing what Lark in the morning was capable of in that <laughs> race, but um, look, she, she's going to get the allowances as well. I think yeah. she would love to be here. I wonder where she's been for the last four months, though. That's been or train tra a bit months as well. That was Christmas, was it? It was. It was the twenty. It was the twenty seventh. Would have been the twenty seventh of yeah. December. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I'm actually yeah, I'm surprised I missed her now. But um, oh, yeah, I'm actually very surprised. I'm disappointed with myself. And that's it. <laughs> Even with the mare's maiden hurdles, that's usually that's usually it might would be my bread and butter. As much as I said, keep an eye on the mare's. Hangover. <laughs> yeah, no, what would be still be a no bet race for me. I'm, I'd be interested to see how Got Glory does get on, but she she wouldn't be a betting proposition at her price. Um, next race then deck would be the rated hurdle over two miles, uh, three ten. All hurdles card actually a nice bar to last, which is a bumper. Um, ten runners. I was actually interested by Noel Maid's comments on Faulty when he won at Down Royal. Um, he kind of held his hands up after he he slipped up. Said uh, he slipped up a punches down in February. Um, the horse just maybe a, a kind of. He said he probably should have won a long time ago, but the the, the horse had smaller little, little issues. But like when you look through his form, ran behind Lucky Lyreen, Westport, Co, Firm Footings. Um, did eventually get his win. He does look like the type of horse that could continue to progress now. Um, but this is a tidy little race. There's you know plenty in here with chances. And I'd say it'd be a decent little bet. And he, who, who have you came down on here? Yeah, they, they, I think this is very tricky. And um, Stoke to Fire must have a rating because I'm just looking at the conditions. Um, the novice hurdle for four years and upwards, which are entry, are rated 130 or less. Weights for your alls 10 stone 6, five year alls and up 11 stone penalties. Performances before the 28th of March. For every one pound above the rating of 116, one pound extra mm. on or after the 28th of March for each or each hurdle race won seven pound extra. So Stoke the Fire has only won once, I'm sure. It's 130. It's equate the 12 stone, I think, is equating to 130. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. but it doesn't have an official rating. No, it's one of these, and and we've seen the Irish handicapper do this a few times, namely yeah. with uh, intense raffles. Yeah, uh, I think he did it with Spillane's Tower, I think as well. Um, but but like uh, it must have a rating because only one month should only be carried on eleven seven. So I suppose you could argue he's wrong at the weights, but probably not. Look, I don't I don't remember really running many in these rated novice hurdles or rated novice chases not usually i can't think of many but i'd imagine he's running because the the jockey championship is starting to hold up now and we'd see later on in the card you, you have jack and paul taking rides they wouldn't normally <laughs> take so yeah like paul hasn't really ridden outside of willies at all this season that i can remember too much um, he took a few over the Christmas or over uh, not Christmas. Oh, I think he took a few over Easter, did he? Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. It's starting to heat up a bit now. Yeah, like, you know, so he's going to be taken. But like, look, he, he was a hurdle winner over two mile five at Tremor. Uh, he was tore to Lag Hill in a Grade Three. Coming here with the best form, like Toto too. He's off since. Uh, people might have talked about him for the Supreme after he won a, a September Maiden, but different ball game altogether 
and he was then beaten nine lengths in Cheltenham in October in a grade two. I think, look away, was, I think is the horse who, who won the race. Um, yeah. Dark No was second in the Lartig of 118, in here of 122. Be eight lengths in a listed handicap then November, I think it was at Navin, off this mark. Although he's carried the 12 stone, I think Stoke the Forest, probably the best horse in here and probably will be able to concede weight to the rest of them. Not a race I would be mad to get involved in. Yeah, um, I, I'd be of a similar note, but I, I would stick with Faulty. Um, I was taken by what, what Noel Mead said, kind of throwing his hands up that, that the horse didn't win earlier. And I think it, the horse has kind of finally gotten the kind of gotten the message now and um, was kind of well on top of the line at Down Royal uh, has a you know experience carrying big enough weights. I, I I, I think he's going to be progressive from here on in. Um, would it be a tentative, a tentative selection though? Uh, as I see, as you said there, Dak, it is quite a, um, it is competitive enough little heat. Um, into the 340, the owner's insurance included in Aero <laughs> membership handicap hurdle. It's an 80 to 95. Here we go. Um, <laughs> you're a bread and butter. You probably missed these, Dak, have you? It's been a while since we did. I it, have missed them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I do long for them on weekends like the one we've had. Yeah, um, I, you go a long way to see more duck eggs um, in one race. <laughs> there's quite a lot of them here. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of horses them. now, first time in a handicap and second time in a handicap. Mm. These are going to be very, very difficult. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not. I'm probably going to delegate to you here that like something has to win, as usual, I say, uh, in this case. But go on, take it away. Uh, look, I'll start with Ladies Man. He's ran a three summer maidens before. Um, he was second in a handicap in October of 88. Got four pounds for it. I, I He'd be of interest now to me the next day. Um, I'd be keeping a keen eye on him. But I, I'd be, you know, haven't been off since October. Got the four pound. Maybe another race into him, he might be able to cope with that four pound. Um, ballerina Boxer, she's got jumping issues. But if her jumping improves, again, I, like, she could get involved, but I'd be just keeping an eye on her to watch her jumping. If it hasn't proved again, wanna be keen on the next day. Look, I, I, I do like this one, but look, I can't there's two I really like in here, and then there's a third one. The third one is Tuller Black Lad. And I, I I'd be raging now if he does spoil the party, but I, I'll take two and then he's not gonna be in the two. Um he made his handicap debut behind Walk Away. In that race in November at Cork, he's been letting races get away from get away from before that. He did run in a good bumper. I think you're going to see massive improvement here. I, I just hope he doesn't find enough improvement because the two I like is first one's Quilch at Arish. I did mention, like I'd say, everyone's going to be drawn to this. Yeah, <laughs> this is the, you, you see Paul Townend in an eighty to ninety five, and I'd say that <laughs> it's a, it's going to be an interesting one to see what price this opens up and then goes over. But I, 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 I will say it like I just think he's he's gonna take rides to try win the championship. I don't think if this was in November, and it would be a wheelchair wheelbarrow job, I think. But look, she, she hasn't always jumped well. And that's a bit of you know you, you, that's gonna put a bit of doubt in your head. It is improving, however. She made her handicap debut in January where she was handy enough, but she was wide, and it was probably being wide. So they they probably ran wide, race are wide. Uh, just to, to get a spin into her. I did mention in the or on when we went on the Orange Racer podcast that she would be of interest to me down in grade, and she is down in grade here. She was meant to run at Leopardstown, but it might have been a not to one or two or a not to one or nine. But she's she didn't actually run that day. Um I think she's got bad, but look, she's obviously of interest in me here now. Um and, and the jockey bump and you're you're absolutely drawn to it. But I just think he's taken these rides because the championship is hotting up. And the other one is no big deal, McManus horse, only a four year old. He's been out the back in, in three maidens and his handicap debut here. His jumping's been okay though. And that's what I like. I think he'd be fine. It'd be between the two of them for me, but I wouldn't be overly surprised if Tuller back Tuller Brack lad did come and spoil the party, but I can't I can't back them all, can I? So um I'll take two. Quilch it reach and no big deal. Yeah, Tullerback lad would have been 
would have been a very interesting one. Duck egg, duck egg, duck egg, duck egg, duck egg. Handicap debut. Thank you very much. Or handicap, <laughs> sorry, second one handicap. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, no, that, <laughs> we'll have to find out. But I, look, Quilcher Arish would have been my very tentative selection as well. But this is your playground, not mine. Like It's just looking at the, the Paul Town end. Um, the Paul Town end book and seeing that she did stop quickly enough. First time tongue tie on as a result. Um, there is a few little you know pointers towards her uh but yeah look she was always going to be on my radar now when she dropped into an alton 95 like even yeah i now now i did put up a horse that day in in that race that was well be so like she didn't run in the race but she wasn't on my short list that day because it was an alton 102 or an alton 109 and she was running against a better class of horse yeah but this oh, i was hoping she'd grown up and she'd be the only one you'd say like you know but like i've i've mentioned five of them there all together but <laughs> i'll take two quids you're reaching no big deal it's just the mcmanus horse you like you know yourself they're they're hard to they're the hardest to work out of the lot um yeah but he has jumped okay that's what i really like well that's the main thing um We'll move on to the the four fifteen, and it is jouster time. The <laughs> thanks to all our sponsors in the national hunt season handicap hurdle, uh, jouster who um, locks horns again with Solly Atwell, who is actually handicapped to possibly reverse that form, depending on what way you look at it, and depending on how much you think jouster has in hand, um, which you would think is quite a fair deal given how he, you know, fell at the second last the last time out when looking like he was going to win. And then I would be of the opinion he wasn't doing a tap in front deck. What about you? No, I don't think he was doing an awful lot in front. But you have to remember, I think he got a few pounds for falling. He did. And, and now he's got another eight. And he, he's up in grade. And look, I, I, I just think this that there could be others looking in here. He, he, might, he, he will have his day again, but... He might be just bumping into something that's better handicapped than him here. Um, and you, you mentioned Sally Atwell. Like, he did give Juicer a fright. Or as you said, Juicer might not have been doing a whole lot in front. But it was only a half length, didn't it? That was over two and a half miles. What's this? Two mile three. Um, that was a big yeah. improvement on his maiden form. But he got four pound for it. And, you know, it's it's difficult like when you get four pound without winning, it kind of turns me off a little bit, and I go looking for something that maybe better treated. Jack Kendy does take the right, however, for King Collins, but King Collins has two in it, and I do like his his mare, uh, Hill Rocket. She ticked a lot of boxes in her maidens, and um, there's plenty of excuses for finishing way out on her handicap debut. If she didn't have those issues, like she made a couple of mistakes, and I think she was bumped a bit and hampered. That was off 97. I think she'd have been a lot closer, maybe a bit of an eye catcher if she didn't have those excuses. She actually been dropped pound. Now, it depends what way you want to read into this. Jack's chasing the, the title and he's riding uh, King Collins or the horse. The other one I like in here is uh, Gabriel Ranger, five year old. He was 16 lengths fourth on his handicap debut over two miles. He was staying on, like, but, but he didn't quite get a smooth passage. Again, was hampered. He was actually awarded for finished fifth. Um, there has been a couple of letters in his form though. He's fallen, I think he's pulled up and he's dropped one pound again. The two of them have been been dropped a pound actually. Uh, David, the two I like, there was going to be a da another danger in there, three in a row. His nine lengths toured here last month, up two pounds for that. Had shown promise in his maidens and he should improve again up and trip. He might be able to cope with the two pounds up and trip. But look, I like four of them. I'm going with the two have been dropped. Whereas, you know, the other two, Sally Atwell and Trainer Row, they've both, both gone up without winning. And the, mm. the two pounds probably harsh for Trainer Row. You know? Yeah, beating nine lengths, yeah. Beating nine lengths, that's harsh. But he's probably going to cope with it up and, you know, stepping up half a mile. But it, it's, you know, it, these races are very, very tricky. I'll take the two who have been dropped over the two who mm. have gone up for not winning. Yeah, I watched the one of three in a row's races back it was obviously the one that waterford whispers won and it was eye catching to say the least and if you were to say you know finishing 13 lengths behind waterford whispers and galway maiden and, and you're in off 97 um and up and trip for the first time like it, it, 
if you say it in that sense, you say, right, like if, if Thursday's the day, he will take an awful lot of beating. It's just, would you rather see Mark Walsh on him? Maybe is the, is the big question, I suppose. Um, obviously, Mark Walsh is, is not riding him, but it's. Um, has he has Walford the, Whispers got anything to do with that two pound? You would nearly wonder is just any excuse to lob something on it. Like he could, but I doubt it. Um, it, it was too long ago, I'd say, to be a factor. Um, like Gabriel Ranger has been dropped the pound for finishing 16 lengths fourth on handicap mm. debut. I'd probably be leaving the horse on the mark he was on, and and Trina Rose beaten nine lengths and gone up two pound. Mm. It's a yeah, it's a it's a questionable one, uh, for sure. I look, Deck, I, I think. I know you said Jouster's up in grade. He's technically he has his twelve stone, but it is still an eighty to one oh two. Um and, and Cromwell's done this before, I think, with a chase or Clamel, hasn't he? The name has escaped me that Money Heist. Money Heist, yeah. It it could be similar to Money Heist, but the only thing that's kind of worrying me is that Solly Atwell, because there's every chance he's progressive too. There's uh, there's every chance these they fight they both fight out to finish. Now you could also argue the third place that day, Danny Defence, has not done much for the form the fourth place horse ran okay i think he's been second subsequently uh, so it depends on where you want to have a look at the form jouster though um there should be enough pace on here for keith donahue to, to hold him up and and he should come home with a flurry because he does have a, a, a nice enough change of gear he's very um, good as well. yeah uh, he was just unlucky i just don't think he saw the hurdle between horses the day he came down and if he'd won that day you could argue he would have been even though he won the last day if he if he won the yeah, day he, he fell, he probably won something when he won the last. Yeah, <laughs> he was six to four, but like he missed the twenty to one. I think he would have won a long way, um, and he probably would have been. He could have nearly been out of the grade if he'd won the on his penultimate start. So mm. I'm going to take a chance that he's just better than an eighty to one hundred two horse, um, and I will go with Jouster. I'll steal your thunder a little bit, Deck, but I know you're going with the dropper. Who's the one you're? Who are the two you're finding on with? Oh, what were the two? Uh, it was Hill Rocket and Gabriel Ranger. Cool. Um, and we challenge any listeners to find a more extensive coverage of an 80 to 102 on any other <laughs> podcast. I dare you. Look, you've got <laughs> stuck into the farm there. I've gone too far. You know, you have given us, nearly given us everything Jouster's eaten. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> anyway, uh, the 450 at Nace. Uh, by the cin- Centenary of Nace Racecourse book by Turtle Bunbury Handicap Hurdle. Deck, you have that book, I think, in your possession. Is it, is it a good book? The century oh, nice. Nice book. yeah no lovely coffee table book isn't it the whopper yeah it's yeah, absolutely it's beautiful, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, mm. i keep it under the under the bed in case somebody breaks into the house very good oh i don't think that's it's a no, it's very good it's very good very very interesting um, yeah well well put together not, not nice pictures in it <laughs> Beautiful pictures, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Throw Salarina at them or something. Um. Anyway, um. Next up, uh, twenty three runner, uh, three mile handicap hurdle. This, this could be the hardest race. This could be the hardest race I've probably ever seen. On the top, <laughs> but we're gonna give it a go. Um. I've a, again, I have a shorter list for this one now, and the rest. I I've a I have two for this, and but there's one I'm I'm actually quite sweet, and I know you you threw cold water on the deck, but I'll I'll wait. Who who are the ones you like? I didn't throw she, she she oh he sorry it's a he he was on he was is on my list but I'll, I'll leave him for, for you to talk wow. about but <laughs> again you know I can't be putting up putting them all up so I narrowed it down to two first since Parix boy barely certain I put Parix boy up before he's still on his opening mark which is 88 he fell when disputing on his handicap debut that was last November um at Cork it was the Galway Gallivanter who went on to win the race. Um, that was over two miles before Fort when he stepped up to two miles six next time, staying on quite well, a bit of an eye catcher. Up again to three miles here, he got to go close. And the other one I like is one for Gonzo. He showed very little in Maidens, but he was staying on when he fell to out of Limerick last month over two miles six. I think the two of these could fight it out ahead of. I had a my one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, the one I like is Ebony Jade. Yeah, it's a strange name for a for a game. Yeah, yeah. I was full sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you were you were rattled there. Um, look, I, I think this is a 
a, a nice horse. Um, look, he ran in decent maidens. Uh, they thought it was decent enough to run, run the bumper with Patrick Mullins up on its on his uh, debut. Uh, ran okay, was fourth, but you know it was nothing special. But in terms of the grade, ran in maidens behind Codwell Potter, beaten thirty two lengths by Tully Hill. And what I thought was very interesting was he was up at the pace that day as a two hundred and fifty to one shot. So I just have the inkling that they might think this is uh, the Dempsey's might think this is a better horse than a mark of ninety one suggests. Themselves. Yeah, well, look, he, he goes out, gets off ninety two again, runs prominent over two miles, um, is weakening, but is badly hampered at the last. Um, and I think that's impacted his finishing position a little bit. He's beaten about 25 lengths in the end. I don't think he'd have been beaten that far if he wasn't hampered. Um, Conor O'Dwyer obviously looking after him when when he was hampered. What was very interesting about this, and this is the the best part about late night recordings while I'm watching the Pompey game, you can really get uh, delving into the form and the, the pedigree, the, the damn uh, Latia's gain. She produced a very good mare called Maya Storm, who really came into her own when she um, ran over three miles. Alan King trained her. Now she wasn't a ninety odd rated mare. She was um, she was up in the one forties. Like she was very very talented um, indeed. And the way they've trained this horse and stepping him up now to three miles, he's learned how to go to gallop and jump well over two miles. And the book and Keith Donahue suggests that this horse is going to be ridden stone cold, and hopefully goes through. The field like a knife through butter similar to jouster but doesn't fall at the second last and um, now he needs we, i need to pray that he gets home because it, stepping a mile up and trip is no easy feat but the way he's gone through this campaign and and they're now going straight up and trip with a tree uh to three miles uh coupled with a jockey booking uh obviously keith on who loves smuggling horses into races and i think that might just suit and i think he could be a big big price so it would be ebony jade for me i i, I just going by the way um, I know there's what four duck eggs in front of his name. Well, look, uh, yeah, here's what it is. I, another thing I just will say, I think sometimes I think when they step up from two miles to three miles, that it's not part of the plan. Yeah, it could be a a, a, a hail mary almost in some sense. Yeah, certain, yeah. I, I often worry about that. Like we're always looking for them stepping up, but stepping up a mile, it could be like Jesus, this this fella's no ability. Although mm-hmm. this this horse obviously does, but you know, going oh. It's very really slow. Like I, wait, it, it's a long way to step up. It's generally In not, testing ground. It is, yeah. Mm. You know, and you're usually finding out, like you know, like the perfect scenario is first run in a maiden over two miles, second run over two and a half miles. Whoa, we showed too much. Back over two miles, <laughs> <laughs> and then two miles in two miles in in the third maiden. Yeah, two miles, two miles, and the like two miles in the handicap, and then back up to two and a half. That's that's the perfect start. That's how you do it. But when you go from two to three, I hmm. think it's usually not part of the plan, especially when there's an eighty to one hundred two to race before over two miles two and one hundred eighty yards. But Keith Donahue probably told them they weren't beating Jouster, so he said, "I'll ride him yeah, in the three yeah. miler. We'll pick. I'll pick up a double." Cheers, lads. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, that's probably gonna happen. Um. Yeah, finally, uh, that's it, Deck. You're good with the 450. All right, now it's No, no, no. Look, I'm, I'm happy we've got, got the one, two, three there. Lovely, happy days. Uh, led at home by obviously Ebony Jade. Uh, the lucky last, uh, seven in the bumper. Uh, the only race not over hurdles. Um, anything for the bumper deck? No, 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 I didn't think so. Uh, 40 coats ridden by uh, is it Alex Jones, isn't it? Henry de Bromhead, Diamond Boy, a couple of old man rivers in there. Um, the the Manju uh, Stallion out of the brilliant race mare Finscale Bio. Um Old Man Dingle, yeah, second in a point, but yeah, look, it, I I'm not a man for having the odd punt in the, in bumpers, so we'll probably leave it at that. Uh, are we safe with a nap at the top there, Deck? Are we, are we going back to the first for the nap at the top? Are we? Oh, in the maiden, what was it? Jasko the Dam. Jasko the Dam. Assuming he's not odds on. Would you would you be comfortable with that? Look, or, or? Well, that's what we have to go with, isn't it? That's that's what we've both landed with. Um, so yeah, okay, fair enough. Just got yeah, down. Yes, a nice early nap at the top. Just well, the yeah. last early nap at the top, I think, was the was the Bill Durkin horse in that four year old hurdle at night. So and then, you know, sometimes it does work. Eagle uh, Fang, was it? Eagle Fang, the very same. Uh, until then, guys, uh, that was top 40. We'll be back very soon with top 41 yeah, covered we'll very quickly. Seconds, yeah, seeing about 30 seconds, a, a nice twilight card, possibly the first of the year at Clonmel. 
Well, it'd um, be great to be coming home nice mates with a load of money and, and straight into Clamwell. <laughs> yeah, you'd be taking taking a pull by the time Jouster comes in, starting for Clamwell. Big bag of cash ready to go on Clamwell. <laughs> go shoot Very the card. Good. Looking forward to it. Well, until thirty seconds time, guys. That was a take podcast Cheers. episode forty. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.